Big moment in the history of AMD releasing its new super high-powered AI chip. Let's get right to the person who has helped engineer a chip like this, of course, along with her team. That is uh, Dr. Lisa Su, chair and CEO of AMD. Uh, Lisa, always great to get some time with you. Wow, that presentation on stage, I think, blew a lot of minds, not only in markets, but also in, in the tech industry. So thank you for doing this. Let's start on something very, very simple. How do you put, and I think I got this number right, 153 billion transistors <laughs> on a chip? Explain it to the, uh, the commoners out there. Ryan, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you for spending some time with us. Um, it's been a big, big day for AMD. I would say I'm so proud of the team we've done. Uh, it was really an, an opportunity for us to talk about just how important AI is uh, overall and then our products uh, within it. So yes, uh, you're absolutely right. MI300X, I said 153 billion transistors. Uh, it's the most complex uh, you know, chip we've ever built. It's the most complex chip, frankly, in the industry. And uh, the way you do it is, uh, let's call it, with a lot of technology. So um, we're super excited about um, the capabilities of you know, MI300. Um, if you think about just how important AI has become, right? AI is like in every conversation, no matter which industry you're in, no matter what you're trying to do. And for AI, you need these extremely powerful uh, GPUs. And there are very, very few companies who can build these things. And um, I'm just um, you know, so, uh, so excited and really, um, you know, really you know, love being part of uh, the opportunity to really change the industry uh, with our AI tech. How long does it take to come up with a chip that has 153 billion transistors on it? Well, uh, we've been working on this roadmap for over five years. I mean, these are the types of things, you know, you don't just wake up one day and say, hey, I want to build an AI chip, um, but it's been a you know, steady progress, right? I mean, you know, you know very much what we've been able to do with our Epic product line for all of these large data centers and cloud um, installations. Uh, we're on our fourth generation with, you know, our Zen 4 technology. It's very similar on the GPU side. Uh, we're, we're launching our, what we call our third generation um, of our GPU architecture. Every generation, it gets better. Every generation, we work really closely with our customers and partners on how to make you know, their software better and how to make our systems better. So yeah, it takes um, quite a long time to do this. But what makes today so special is it's not just, you know, it's a great product because you know, great products come along um, uh, you know, all the time, but it's also a great product at the right time, solving the right problem uh, for the industry. And that's where we are with AI. Um, AI is at the very beginning of adoption. And you know, what's become clear is you need compute. That's the foundation of AI. And that's what we're building with MI300X. So every one of those 153 billion transistors are helping us learn, helping compute learn, helping us answer questions, and um, you know, really deploying in, uh, in broad scale with a lot of our partners. So I'm watching you on stage, and I'm just blown away by some of these numbers. Look, I'm, I'm not a scientist, but all that seemed really like, wow, like this is some game-changing technology. How complex is it to manufacture these chips? And then how many, do you have an estimate on how many you will make next year? Yeah, absolutely, Brian. I mean, it is um, so many process steps. I mean, if you think about these um, MI300s, they're actually made up of 12 little chips. Uh, we call them chiplets in five and six nanometer technology. Um, we actually stack chips, um, you know, both uh, uh, horizontally as well as vertically. So we, you know, we bring, um, you know, chips on top of each other. And it takes about, you know, seven plus months, seven, eight months to manufacture. So, you know, when you start today, it takes seven or eight months before it comes out. So yeah, it takes takes a long time. Now, I have to say, we've been planning for this day. So, uh, you know, we're experts in the supply chain. I think in the semiconductor world, um, this is what we do. Uh, so we have, um, you know, significant supply um, that's uh, that's coming out in 2024. And we're working um, with a number of partners. You saw a number of them today, um, you know, so honored uh, to have, you know, Microsoft, Meta, Oracle, uh, Dell, Lenovo, Supermicro, a number of real, you know, AI, you know, really smart AI startups that are, uh, there. Um, and so uh, what we see is the ecosystem is hungry um, for this technology and, and we're ready for it. Lisa, are you just sold out? Uh, what's the backlog of sales look like for these chips? 
Well, uh, you know, Brian, what we said in our last conference call is that, uh, you know, we have very clear line of sight to, um, you know, $2 billion of revenue next year. Um, but we, what we also said is we plan for success. Um, you know, from my perspective, uh, customer demand is very high. Uh, we continue to work with our customers to uh, deploy as quickly as possible. And we have much more supply than uh, than $2 billion. So, you know, I, I do believe as we go through next year, uh, we'll be able to update those numbers. Wow, that's uh, some mind blowing stuff. Let's st stay on this thread of me not being a scientist. So I watched your whole presentation, I'm watching and I continue to watch it. And I came away thinking your chips will add more power to large langu language models. Help us understand what these chips will let these models do that they can't do today. Yeah, no, that's a great question, um, Brian. So, look, I think we've all, um, you know, really experienced how powerful ChatGPT and, and co-pilot functions are um, in our personal lives, in our uh, businesses, in our enterprises. We're using it within AMD to build better chips. So that's where the technology is. Now, as you guys know, sometimes when you ask, um, you know, ChatGPT a question, it won't give you the quite the right answer because the model doesn't have, let's call it, um, all of the knowledge. Um, when you have larger models, when you actually train it on more information, it'll get more and more accurate. And so what we're working on is the technology for the next generation and the next generation. And what we're trying to do is to make this AI technology so easy to use, but so powerful that it makes all of our daily lives better. So more compute will allow you to train better models. They'll be smarter. And it'll also allow you to get answers much more quickly. So you don't have to wait. You know, sometimes there's a little bit of a delay between when you ask the question and when you actually get the answer. Uh, we're building these chips so that that delay is as short as possible. And you can bring that computing technology everywhere you go, like it, including in your PCs, for example. So if we're having this conversation a year from now, what are these models doing that they aren't doing today? I, I think the most important thing, Brian, is we want them to be right. Mm -hmm. We want them to be as good as possible. We want them to help us answer questions as quickly as possible. And uh, we want the answer to be um, the right answer. And so these models are going to get much more accurate. Um, they're going to be much more tuned to your data, um, you know, particularly when you think about your, your own personal space or your own enterprise space. And for that, you need lots and lots of GPUs. Today, um, you know, it is one of those constrained resources. You know, our job is to make the technology better and ensure that there's plenty of opportunity for, um, you know, all companies uh, to have uh, access um, to this great technology. You've seen a lot of different uh, advances in technology throughout the course of your career. I was thinking, I think you mentioned this on stage too, the, the creation or the start of the internet. Uh, are companies putting in the, the right safeguards um, to protect society from these large language models, given how fast things are moving in this? You know, I would say that this moment is, um, you know, just uh, unlike any other moment. So, you know, I've been in this industry, you know, 30 plus years. We've seen a lot of great technology, um, but AI is um, is a step function above that in terms of what we believe the potential is. Now, we do have to put in safeguards. Um, I think there's a lot of work going on um, in that uh, area, uh, but the upside, you know, far outweighs um, the potential uh, risks. And, you know, as technology companies, uh, we're all in this together to ensure that the technology is rolled out in a, a very productive and capable as well as safe way. There's been a lot, a lot of discussion since we last spoke, Lisa, on sending AI chips to China. What is your position on this? Well, I mean, from an overall standpoint, um, you know, we certainly spend a lot of time with the administration. Uh, we understand the importance of the export control uh, regulations uh, to, you know, ensure that we're keeping uh, the most advanced technologies um, in the United States, and we we, we absolutely um, understand that. That being the case, um, China is also an important market, and we have a lot of great partners there. And so, I think the key is, um, you know, we plan to have a portfolio, and you know, in that portfolio, we are going to be, um, you know, extremely, um, you know, focused on ensuring that, uh, you know, we have, you know, sort of bleeding edge technology, and then we also have a broad portfolio for um, all applications. And our thanks to Brian Sazi for that in-depth interview with Lisa Su, AMD CEO.